Hey everybody, you're listening to the Smoke Meat Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Uh, we are sponsored by Joe's Underground in Augusta, Georgia. It's in the corner of 8th and Broad in the bottom of the Lamar Building. Uh, I goes to Joe's and so should you. Right now, everybody's doing the social distancing things. So Joe's is doing what they have to and not opening right now. But don't worry, it won't be long. Today, I am so happy I got to sit and talk with the great and lovely Lisa London. Uh, had a really good time. You've seen Lisa and all kind of stuff. So we're just going to kind of get to it. Here's Lisa London on Smoke Meat Podcast. Hey, everybody. You're listening to the Smoke Meat Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Today, we have got the fabulous Lisa London with us. Actress, singer, all-around good person. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to kick this thing off. How are you today, Lisa? I'm as good as a person can be in a pandemic, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this is definitely changing the way a lot of things are done right now. That's for sure. It is. It is. I mean, as as dreadful as it is to be, you know, kind of like all of us in our own little quarantine prisons, cages, whatever you want to call it, I think it's going to have some beautiful uh, changes and effects that will stay with us, hopefully, as far as everyone tapping into all their other talents and interests and and realizing how much we cherish um, being around the people we love and also just, um, you know, like a little bit of insight about science and germs and maybe keep us from getting other things like flus and colds from each other too, you know. Gotta, lo- gotta look at it as glass half for sure yeah definitely definitely i know it's the the quarantine thing when this kind of kicked in i i kind of moved down here into my little basement man cave and i said well I'm, i'll go upstairs and hang out with the wife and kids some but i'm not going to get close and I, i'm spending a lot of time down here but i'm doing a boatload of podcasting and recording stuff well, that's good. See, uh, we got to just stay productive, positive, and creative, right? Definitely. And I, I've um, done a lot. I've probably done a dozen podcasts in the last week, and they have all just been, each one just goes up a level. That's so great. And I've been I've been doing tons of them, too. And a lot of times as an actress, I'll say, oh, I've done a few. I don't want to get satiated. I don't want people to get sick of what I have to say. But in today's times, we're like so seeking out something to do and listen to and, and watch. So I've been really enjoying sharing all the stories I have about Hollywood and life and travel and all of that stuff. And it's, it's yeah, there's, it, you know, there's something to say for having to go inward Um Hopefully, we'll all emerge as better human beings and better to each other. Yeah, I, I believe we will. You know, just being out and about in it as a medic, I'm, I'm watching people, and they're, they're going one of two ways. They're either kind of going off the rails, or people are changing and being more considerate and yes. more, yes. more thoughtful about other people. And and I'm going to put on my uh, interview journalism sportscaster background and, and bring it up that you're a full-time paramedic, which... Again, I thank you for your service. I said that before we even went on the air. And a friend of mine that I grew up with in Palm Springs, his name is Ken Dobbins, and he's quite a character. He was a huge football star. He owned a printing company. Um, He's just one of my best friends from when we were like in junior high. And he was a fireman and working um, as an EMT. And and when this all started, the real scary part of like what your symptoms are and, you know, people should isolate and quarantine if you think you have it and blah, blah, blah. I had just had minor dental work. I had never even had a cavity, except I had two um, crowns on my teeth from something that happened when I was a teenager. And they were really old, and I needed them replaced. So I got them replaced, and they're gorgeous, by the way. <laughs> but yes, they do. I started having this horrid headache. I mean, a headache where I thought I was going to die. I kept hearing horrible sounds in my um, ears, and I have really great hearing and I just felt achy and nauseous and I'm like oh my god I've got it I've got it I've got it right so I go to my fabulous doctor this is when you could still go to doctors this is right before it got really crazy and you know only emergency stuff at doctors or hospitals and my wonderful doctor said to me no 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 it's probably a slight sinus infection from this dental work you had and then when I talked to Ken he said oh my god yeah it's from when they give you the Novocaine you know they try as hard as they can not to hit a nerve or something but they probably did and Both people were completely correct and right, and it went away. And um, the other crazy thing was I never had a fever, and I never had any cough or 
any respiratory issues. So anyway, I sure love paramedics and EMTs. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, it's, it's fun. You know, I, I'd mentioned to you, I may be sniffling some during this because I've, I've got some sneezing and coughing going on. I cough because, one, I'm stupid. I smoke, but... Nah. Oh, don't you dare. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. I know. I, I'm I, giving you virtual spankings right I, now. I take a, a line from Red Fox. You know, he said, I don't drink new drugs or chase wild women. I'll feel stupid laying on my deathbed dying of nothing. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. He was wonderful, wasn't he? He definitely was. But, you know, I, I know the sniffling and all is 99.99% of sinuses because I'm in Georgia and we are elbow deep in pollen right now. Right. And I check my temperature probably 10 times a day. Um, I am just, I'm a worst case scenario guy. Right, so, right. You know, oh, I've got it. I, I don't have it. I'm pretty 99.999% <laughs> sure I do not have it. Wonderful. But, uh, everybody is starting to take this thing. It, it's becoming a, such a part of our lives that people are starting to get used to it and getting yes. complacent. Yes. I know, and that can't be because we really have to flatten this curve and eliminate it so that we can live life again because it is doable. I mean, I'm in California, and I, I got to say I'm really proud of my state. Um, it could have been so much worse here. And most people, I mean, you'll see, you know, a lot of, you know, sorry, but for lack of a better word, um, let's call them ignorant. <laughs> they yeah. don't really buy into the seriousness of it. You'll see a few here and there, but literally i think 90 percent of californians have been amazing and respectful of how everything we do affects someone else too it's not just about ourselves so yeah. hopefully we'll all get it together and get rid of this thing yeah. sooner rather than later yeah like i was telling you i'm if i get it there's a great chance i can fight this thing off because i've, I've got a yes. good immune system yes but at the same time i love someone that runs a nursing home and if I give it to her, she's going to infect 200 sick, sicker old exactly. people. Exactly. Exactly. That's the horrible, dangerous part of it. And my kids. And also the and, systematic thing where you don't even know when you have it, too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'm i staying away because of that. Because I, I can fight it, but everybody can't. And Exactly. I'm, I'm still going out, obviously, because I have to it, at mm -hmm. work. And, you know, we're still buying groceries and things like that. But when I go right. out, I do wear a mask. Right, me too. And uh, it's amazing when this thing first started, people were clamoring and fighting for masks. I mean, using everything they could. Now I, I go into the grocery and store. And this wonderful country has rallied to the point where now it's not a hard thing to get. I know, it's quite wonderful. Yeah, but now, now whenever I go into the grocery store or wherever, people aren't social distancing. They're not wearing masks. The employees oh, aren't that's wearing them. Now, now, where are you again? You're in Georgia, yeah, I'm right? Yeah, I'm just south of Atlanta, yeah. That's Well, I guess... People are just, you know, picking up on what they really have to do slowly but surely. And then some people get lax again. I think we just need constant reminders all the time. Yeah. So here we are. We're reminding you all. Be yeah. safe. Do what you're supposed to do. Let's get rid of this thing. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so you, you've been an actress for over 25 years. And I was, I was looking at your IMDb when, when I talked to Steve. And you have been in everything. I have, haven't I? You I've been very have. I, I've been very blessed with insane beginner's luck. And I started when I was nineteen years old. So it's just been an incredible ride. And I've also been really adaptable. Um I'm willing to uh and accept change, which I think, you know, a lot of people resist that. And the last few years of my life have been, I mean, just as good if not better than the best parts of my career in every every way i mean just the things i've got going on right now i'm so excited about and so grateful for and i think a lot of it too is um i've always had this determination that i would live my life entirely as much as i love and live for my craft of acting i still wanted to have a full life always so there, the times that it was lean or I had to, you know, really contemplate, oh, my gosh, you know, I haven't worked in a while. What's going to happen? I just still managed to experience life all the time, almost like where I was researching for whatever would come next <laughs> as a role. And thank God it's 
it's really paying off lately. It's been better than ever. I've got so many great things happening right now. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. You know, a lot of people will find something they love to do and they'll just concentrate, period, on that. You know, like some actors, that's all they're going to do. And, you know, I know firefighters and paramedics that, boom, they, they live that job. Right. And that's that's right. cool because I've done that. But I've also finally figured out several years ago, never turned down a chance to do anything. Exactly, and exactly. I, I've got and also, so many I, neat, I, neat opportunities I am one like of those that. people. I love to travel. And I mean, thank God, because of my career, I mean, it's taken me from Hawaii to Poland to Germany to Mexico to Texas to, to New York. You know, I've been so, so lucky. But I also love exploring things on my own. So I've I, I always manage, like, whenever I go on location to shoot something, I always manage to make sure I get some part of that as as, an, as a way for me to learn about that country or that state or that city or explore on my own, too, because I just love meeting new people and experiencing things in, in new lands. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and anybody that doesn't, you know, tr at least try and learn something new every day or take take the chances miss out on so much and I've been in two movies that I was background in I'm sure but hey it, it was cool because I'd never been in anything <laughs> like this I love uh, that you loved it I know and it's funny you know this whole virus thing it's made me go back to writing a lot and sketching and doing poetry so it's like it, like we were talking about um just how there there should be some things from this that we continue to do and remember even though, of course, we all want to get back to doing what we love, which is really living and really being with our loved ones, not just virtually on, <laughs> on Zoom and FaceTime. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, like I say, a lot of good creativity is coming out of this. I mean, it's just, I'm, I've been listening to some podcasts of people who don't normally do it. You know, some have started them and right kind of getting their feet wet and they're doing great because they're yes you're kind of forced you know you can't go out to a club and perform for you know these people exactly can't, it's, it's can't forcing us now. exactly it's forcing us all to to really communicate and to really listen to each other yeah yeah and I, you know, i've got some character videos that i do um on my youtube channel and it's Brad's comedy all one word no apostrophe um check that it. out because you will have a fit over some of these characters <laughs> and, uh, I will. and I've been writing for them some and what's weird is I've never written for them I've always done everything one take all improv mm -hmm. and my creativity is starting to like say I'm, I'm down here in the basement you know it's a, it's a nice finished basement it's not like I'm in a <laughs> dungeon or anything but, right right and uh I'm actually having to use my mind and do this now and it's it's actually a lot of fun you know I'm recording wow, an audio book for a it. friend of mine I love it. Um, I'm actually going to do a radio play, or not, you know, well, yeah, a radio play of the book. What fun! And uh, I did a radio show um, for gosh about three years. It was called The Young Marquis and Stanley, uh -huh. and it was on K Rock. And I did all the female voices, and I had so much fun doing that. Uh, well, I, and then when I when I got my record deal on um, CBS Sony Records, when I was in the pinups, Rodney Bingenheimer. Um, a big DJ out here in California, he totally remembered my show too and would, would, would get off so much on asking me about the different characters we did. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I, I love doing different voices, but um, I may me actually too. get in touch with you about doing my female characters because my female voices are horrible. I can, well, do, I can do any kind of well, male Well, I voice. would love to do them. Yeah, cause this, the, the book is really good. I can't give a whole lot of it away right now. I'll tell you when we're done with this because it's, it's actually Fabulous. a really good book. Fabulous. But uh, one of my doctors actually wrote it, one of my ER doctors. And I stumbled oh, on I it one it. night and asked him I about it. I love it. Yeah. And he gave me a copy. And I couldn't <laughs> put it down. I'm like, this guy's got chops. That's wonderful. So, yes, it's funny. You just never know what people do when they're not around you, what what makes them go. And he loves exactly. writing. And it, it shows. Exactly. But yeah, um, but yeah, in, in in all your time in show business, you know what what has been your favorite thing? If you had to, if you had to nail down one thing that was just your favorite piece of it. Oh my gosh, I really couldn't pick a favorite. I really can't. <laughs> Everything I've done has been so diverse. I mean, obviously, the things I've just done recently are so, you know, on the top of my 
my, my brain on the tip of my tongue. So I guess being in the morning show, um, Apple TV Plus is um, for a series that um, I got to be directed by the in, incomparable Mimi Leader. And it's this amazing award-winning show right off the bat. And I'm in the final episode and just um, being in that and making history in that show was pretty amazing. <laughs> And um, I just did this film called Choke for this wonderful director, Gregory Hatanaka, that I've got a bunch of films coming out with him on Amazon Prime and Tubi. And um, we did this film Choke that he wrote for me to be kind of like um, a vehicle to really showcase my talents. And we did it on, on this um, kind of shoestring budget and um magical locations that you know accidents happened and it became even better than the script and yeah. there were some moments in there that were just fabulous and um shooting in hawaii with um the legendary andy sedaris was oh, that, incredible that would just be terrible oh yeah how, it was just so the sacrifice how do you stand it oh that would exactly. be so exactly awesome. and then being directed and co-starring with clint eastwood is my first ever dramatic part and then being in a movie with Tom Hanks, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Dabney Coleman, Christopher Plummer. Yeah, that was really rough. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched <laughs> I mean, Dragnet a lot the other of... night. Oh, good. I, I, so as a matter of fact, last week I interviewed Ed O'Halloran. Uh -huh. Not Ed, what I call it, Ed We don't have Jack. scenes together, I don't <laughs> think, but, but yeah, we're both in it. Yeah. Yeah, I sing in that, too. I'm supposed to sing poorly because it's a it's a spoof on the playboy mansion and i'm supposed to be you know beautiful but untalented <laughs> but um it was pretty fun i got to sing in that too yeah i, I watched that the other night as a matter of fact after i interviewed jack i'm like i haven't seen dragnet in a while and i, I looked and found it i'm like yep watch a dragnet it. tonight i love it but yeah you know and it's it's so neat that you know it's the the oh, like i said i was in two movies one of them was a little independent thing called The Mark. I was background. And the other one uh, was a movie called Fled with Lawrence Fishburne and Stephen Baldwin. And it was oh, a, yeah. It was a I, great I just, movie. I just worked with um, Daniel Baldwin a couple of years ago. I co-starred in a movie with him called Divorce Texas Style, and we shot that in Texas. Nice. Yeah, yeah I love shooting in Texas. I'm doing something now for Walker Cable Productions um, called Invaded with Lorenzo Lamas and... Corbin Timbrook and Shelby James, and we're just having such a blast shooting this series there. And hopefully, as soon as this is over, we're going to get back to work. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm ready for everybody to get back to work. And oh be gosh, able to yes. Do what they need to do, you know. Yes. But yeah, I mean the things you get to see and do on a movie set, you know. Even though, like I said, I was back when we were the standby ambulance on the thing, and I got lucky. They said I need a paramedic, so I went over there. Next thing you know, I'm a foot away from Ken Jenkins. Zipping a body bag and standing right behind them while they're <laughs> all talking, it. and that, that was really neat. Got to, life became art. It, exactly, that was so cool, and uh, like I say, got to meet you know Lawrence Fishburne, Stephen Baldwin, Will Patton. Will Patton is awesome. I had cool. all talking to him. I bet. I bet. Yeah, it was surreal. I played a reporter in a movie called Fire Trap with Dean Kane, mm. and it was the first time I got to showcase my skills of what I went to college for. <laughs> so <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah, but I, I tell you, this everybody says. You know, I've, I've been in comedy for almost thirty years, just doing stand up, and I've never made it big. I, I think I've had two paying gigs my whole time, and one of them was in a the. the backside of a strip club in savannah georgia in a strip mall wow <laughs> yeah if, if there's ever a movie made it at night i'd always say ben stiller will well, be in that movie that's wonderful i actually did a movie where i played a stripper by night and a lost student by day called legal briefs it's on usa channel <laughs> uh -huh. nice yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, no Got to learn how to do the, the pole dancing, which is really an intense workout, by the oh, way. Oh, man, I, it looks like it is. I mean, it all, is. all joking aside and all the obvious yes, insert stripper but, jokes here, that's Exactly, rough. but they are incredible dancers. I agree. You know, I, I can't hold a coat between my knees and not <laughs> drop it half the time. I could imagine holding yourself up on a pole. Right? No, this fat boy would just die right then. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's, I, I love doing comedy. I love entertaining people. Anything I can do to make somebody smile, 
That's just I know. Me. I love comedy too. I've actually got a, a comedy coming out on Amazon Prime called Acrylic, and it's about dueling nail salon owners. Oh man! <laughs> oh, it is wonderful. I mean, wonderful. I cannot wait for people to see that. I'm right. And then that down I'm going right to also now. be doing something called Cannibal Pep Squad with the legendary director Jim Wynorski, and I cannot wait to start shooting that too. I just want to get back to work so badly. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like I say, keep your creativity going, you know. Maybe a good time to write some more songs. Exactly. Record a little bit because recording stuff now, I mean, this this mic that I'm using here, I, I used to do radio, and we had some really nice mics there, obviously. And I just upgraded, and this one's a, it's made by a company called Rode called a um, Pod Mic. Well, it and, sounds beautifully clear. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a $99 microphone, and I thought, well, I'm going to give it a try, and I am so amazed by this. You know, you can get such good quality things now that Wonderful. aren't ridiculous like it used to be. Right. And, you know, the creativity, you can, you can record your own stuff now, and it sounds like you were in a studio in Nashville or L.A. or New York. Absolutely. But it's going to end. It's going to end, I guarantee. People are going to get back to, well, I, I, I don't want to say they're going to get back to normal. Hopefully we're going to get back to better. We're going to get back to better and the horrible um, restrictions that everyone, you know, is kind of rebelling against, I guess you could say that, the, one, the people that aren't adhering to it, because it is difficult to do. And believe me, I hate wearing a face mask, but I think eventually all of that's going to be history again because you know there were things like ebola and sars and smallpox and polio and that's all behind us so i think we're going to get past this COVID also yeah, eventually i think we hopefully will. hopefully sooner rather than later most definitely my the one thing about this whole thing that has puzzled me and i i just i, I think i found the answer to it is the toilet paper issue I know. That angered me. That's the only thing where I was disgusted and revolted by human behavior. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. Because it was so ridiculous. And also, I, and it also didn't make any sense. Like, So why couldn't they ship more toilet paper right away? There's got to be got like gazillions of toilet paper warehouses all over the world. Yeah. It was very strange. Yeah, it was. It's still not normal again. No, I it, mean, I still haven't seen the ones that you know, enough, enough quantity anywhere to make anyone feel like the problem's solved. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty uh, crazy. Now, there's a paper mill down in South Georgia in Albany, and uh, Albany has been hit really hard with this. I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. like, really bad right now through this whole thing. Awful. They have been. And uh, they've got a paper mill down there that, you know, they put out a press release that they were, you know, round the clock, we're producing, we're going to help with this. It, which is awesome because one, the people get to go back to work and do this. Two, we'll have toilet paper. Yes, but exactly. At the, same, at the same time, I don't know if you're a Walking Dead fan. It's kind of like ordering takeout ribs from Terminus. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. God, God bless them. I, I hope they do good down there because I've got some friends in Albany and it's, it's been rough. Well, my love and light to Albany. Yeah, but it's. But I, I do have a theory on the toilet paper, and I actually did a did a video one morning. I woke up about five o'clock in the morning and thought of this. Just I said, I got to go film this before I forget it. Uh -huh. And I actually got dressed in the dark to keep from waking my wife <laughs> up. Went to our downstairs bathroom, and it just it just came to me. I got a square of toilet paper and putting a little ramekin, a little cup, you know, and I uh, put some. Hand sanitizer on it, stirred it up till it kind of dissolved into it, and said, "This is what people are doing. They're making their homemade COVID Vicks and rubbed a little bit on my chest and under my nose." And that, that's my theory. I don't know, but I am going to tell you now: if you rub that on your chest, it burns. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Um, I think we're on Facebook. You can, you can just look on my timeline. It's on there somewhere. And if not, okay. I'll send it to you. But it's it's funny. It just came. First thing in the morning, my shirt's actually on backwards and inside out. <laughs> so that made it I even know. better. It's hard to even remember what day it is because we're so used to, you know, keeping track of things because we have busy schedules of where we're going and who we're seeing. And it's just, 
that is, you know, that's just not the case these days at all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, man, oh, man. So, um, we're coming up on our time. So, you've told me about your movies, about the um, acrylic and all the others. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to acrylic coming out because that sounds like that's going to be so funny. Thank you. And the other ones I have are called Body of Night and Heartbeat. And then I'm actually going to be doing a film about the coronavirus, too, mm -hmm. um, that we were supposed to start shooting right when it started, when it wasn't like the horrible, you know, crisis that it is now all over the world. So the script is constantly being changed and revised. So I can't wait to start doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, did you did you happen to did you play some of my music? Because I, 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 I did didn't hear anything in the background well i'm, I'm actually going to put that in um as i as i edit this oh cool awesome 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 but, yeah oh, yes. that's from the naked cage a song called heartbeat and it's from it which not to be confused with the movie i've got heartbeat that's coming out totally different but yeah the naked cage was a movie i starred in in the 80s that quentin tarantino actually just um re-released uh he uh, refurbished the print, re-released it, and it was sold out. And the Q and A lasted for hours. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. And he put it, um, he played it at his theater, the Beverly Theater here in Hollywood. It was pretty cool. Oh, that is so amazing! Yeah, I'm... yeah, I know. It was great. It was a women's prison movie. It was actually way ahead of its time. Directed by a German producer named Paul Nicholas, and it's just a beautiful film. I mean, people were blown away. I was blown away. I'm like, wow. I really was great because <laughs> yeah, at the time when you you know especially I'm still so critical of everything I do but as a young actress you're you're really hard on yourself and it's it was yeah it was pretty cool and it was so wonderful because I got to sing on the soundtrack too so it was pretty cool oh yeah um, yeah I listened to that I actually listened to it last night that was really good thank and you I, I am going I'm, that's going to be my intro Awesome. I can't wait to hear this. Yeah. Um, as I, I have had a ball doing this. Um, and uh, you do have a dubious honor. You were the first um, woman that I've interviewed on my podcast. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. You don't know how much I love that because I am such a daddy's girl. And like all my best friends have always been guys growing up. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's yeah, I, I mean, I know more about sports than most guys do. So... That really makes me feel great. Yeah, Thank I, you. I'll tell you what's funny. You know, you're talking about that. Like here in Georgia, you figured I would be hardcore SEC football. Yes. I, I can watch it or not. It doesn't bother me a bit, <laughs> you know. But my I, wife, when the Georgia game comes loves on, it, right? Oh, my kids will not sit in the living room with my wife while the Georgia game's on. Oh, that is. She is hysterical. very passionate about Georgia football, and it's awesome. Well, I love her so. Well, you sure have done well lately. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, well, I have had a ball doing this, and um. Thank you. I did too. Yeah, and I put put your um any any websites anything you got out there. Yes, please. There. Um, uh, uh, tell. Let's see. Should I give them to you right now? Yeah, just put put them out there, and I'll. Okay, that it's uh, on it. Instagram. I'm Lisa London LA. That's my handle, Lisa London LA. And then on Facebook, um, I'm Lisa London Fan. And also the Pinups, um, the group I was in, uh, my major record deal, it's called The Pinups Live. And those are both two pages you can find me on Facebook. And then, of course, IMDb, you know, the big international movie da database. You can always go on there to see what I'm up to, also. Oh, yeah. Well, outstanding. Well, Lisa, I appreciate you coming on. You're welcome on here anytime. Thank you, you so much. If you have anything you want to push much. or promote, give me a call. We will do it. Thank you, sweetheart. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, do you need a photo or anything like that? Or did uh, you pick something already? I'll, I'll pick one unless you have a favorite one. And if you got a favorite one, send it to me and I'll, I'll post it. Um, you know what? Go ahead and pick anything you want. It doesn't really matter. What were you thinking of? Did I, you know yet? I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, can you run it by me and then we'll go from there? I will definitely do it. Awesome, sweetheart. Thank you so much, Brad. Stay safe. I am definitely going to do that. You stay safe out there, too. Awesome. And I will love to do voiceovers for you if you're, you get to that. Outstanding. Okay. 
Bye. Bye.